Before getting into this video, look at what is the agenda for this particular session. We are going to see when we have to use Docker volumes and how Docker volumes works and what are the types of Docker volumes. And finally, we are going to see a simple demo by deploying Spring Boot application and the PostgreSQL DB as a Docker container and how we are going to utilize Docker volumes for this specific two containers. If you are working as a developer and you are deploying your application as Docker containers in production environment, you must know about Docker volumes. So stay tuned until end of the video. When to use Docker volumes? To say in simple words, Docker volumes are used for data persistence in Docker containers. If you are using database for your application, where your application writes data into database. And also some stateful applications where they have to maintain the state of the data they are processing. Let us see what are the specific scenarios that we have to use Docker volumes. We know that containers runs on some host machines. And we have a Docker container and it has a virtual file system where the data is saved usefully. But here, there is no persistence. What will happen? If I stop and start the container, the data is gone. The container restarts with fresh state. So whatever the application that has written some data on our container has gone. This is not the expected behavior for any application that has been deployed on production environment. The database must retain its state. Whenever even we restart the application, the data should be popped up on our front-end application. Even after the restarting of the container, I expect the application should have the data that has been processed previously. That is where Docker volumes comes into the picture. Now we see how exactly Docker volumes works. We know that there, is, there will be physical file system on host machine. And we plug the physical file system path into the virtual file system path of the Docker container. To say in simple terms, the folder in physical file system of the host machine is mounted into the virtual file system of the Docker container. So what happens now? Whatever the data written by the Docker container into the folder of virtual file system is replicated into the folder of the physical file system and vice versa. So whatever the change that we make into the physical file system folder that will be replicated into the folder of the virtual file system. That is the reason even if the container restarts still it gets the data from the physical file system folder since the data exists there. There are three types of docker volumes host volumes, anonymous volumes, and named volumes. Now we are going to see how these Docker volumes works and how we can create them. Usually, we can create Docker volumes using docker run command. There is an option hyphen b which refers volume. And we have to connect the folder in the physical file system to the folder in the file system of Docker container. This way we can create host volumes. The advantage of these host volumes is we can decide where on the host file system the reference is made. So which folder on host file system mount into the container. The second one is anonymous volumes. 
This kind of volume is created by just giving reference of the folder in the virtual file system of Docker container. In this case, the folder in the physical file system in the host machine is created by Docker itself. Automatically, this particular folder is mounted into the file system of the Docker container. So we no need to create any folder in a physical file system. That's the reason it is called as anonymous volumes. The third one is named volumes, which is the, an improvement of anonymous volumes. We can create this kind of volumes using Docker run command, which with the option hyphen B. And we are going to give the label as a name by giving the reference of folder in the virtual file system of the container. Among these three Docker volumes, the popular one is named volumes. And also, you must be using this in production because you don't need to create any folder in physical file system. Under the hood, Docker will create it for you under the path the Docker volumes and it will be plugged into the Docker containers virtual file system because we don't need to maintain any folder in a physical file system. That is the advantage of this and you just need to know the path of the folder in the virtual file system in the container. This is how we can create volumes using the Docker command. In the case of Docker Compose, it is also same, but there will be a Docker Compose file. If you see here, this under the services section, there is a volumes. Here we'll mention that the name of the Docker volume, which is scrum data here, and the path. This is the virtual file system path from Docker container. And we have to mention volumes attribute in the Docker Compose, and we have to give the name of the Docker volume, which is a scrum data, this the one. And we have the other Docker containers. In the next video, we are going to see how we can utilize Docker volumes for our stateful applications. Now we are going to see how we can utilize Docker volumes, free application, Angular, which is a front-end application, the Spring Boot application, which is Dockerized, and third one, we are using database, which is a PostgreSQL database. The Spring Boot application writes the data into database and also it retrieves the data to show it on front-end application. These three applications are Dockerized and we are going to see how these configurations can be done in Docker Compose using Docker volumes. If you don't know what is Docker Compose is, click on the link showing on the top to know more about Docker Compose. I have a made a video a few days back. You can look at it. This is uh, my IntelliJ screen. This is my Spring project, Spring Boot application. You are seeing the Docker Compose YAML file here. And you can see that I have defined version services. Under the services, you can see the Scrum Postgres, which is a Docker container details of a Postgres here. We have given image name and container name as Scrum Postgres. Now we are more interested on this volume part. So here we have given the Docker volume name as Scrum data, and this is the virtual file system of Docker container, which is referring to the folder in the virtual file system. And this database is running on 5432 port and exposed via 5432. And we have uh, environment details, PostgreDB, username and password. And we have another Docker container, which is a backend application, which is a Spring Boot application making calls to S PostgreSQL database, updating the data and also retrieving the data and showing it on front-end application, which is uh, defined here, that is Scrum UI and volumes. So this volumes is very important for us because we are going to test this and volume should be the, the name should be given, which is Docker volume name that has been defined in the Docker container volumes part this is the one so it should match with that but we are seeing without volumes because we want to test how application behaves if we don't define any volumes and we restart the application after creating some data using front-end UI application and we'll see what happens to the data 
when we restart the container. Okay. Let's open the terminal window. Let's make it clear. So just you need to run docker compose command up docker compose up it takes few seconds so application is up and running and let's open the browser so usually this application is running on 4200 port that you can see it here so on localhost so that's we are giving it here so this is the just a scrum board application where you can create a user stories so just create flag we are creating some data and it is going to save in a post database i need to refresh it and there is some issue with the front end application but it's not a problem for now to test our scenario and i'm going to create one more user story create a blog post save it so now we have created two user stories create a task for connect images you can give the color something yeah and we create one more type of task make a black post color so we can drag so basically when you are doing these actions the data is storing in database so we create data here as well something blah 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 mm -hmm. one more task yellow so refresh it you can see the task so we have created two user stories and each user story will have some tasks if you go to create flag yeah there is some task defined here so we can see the data you know whenever you are clicking on the link and it is showing that means it is retrieving the data from database and it is showing it on our user interface of the container and we are going to restart it how we can stop using docker compose docker compose down yeah the containers are down now so this ensures that application is not running and we are going to restart it again using docker compose up so what will happen what you are guessing as we talked earlier if we don't define volumes and so whatever the data that has been created in previous session that has been deleted because we just stopped the docker container and we haven't defined any volumes for our docker container so obviously the application starts with fresh state and there is no data that has been created in previous session so that's the reason docker volumes came into the picture now we are going to create the volumes let's undo it i want to give different name because i have tested it before with the same name so there will be some data that might be showing so we are going to and i created volume now with the name test data it is a named value and this is the virtual file system the folder name is data and we have to refer this under the volume section in line with services and the name of the named volume name i created the volumes for application i'm going to stop the running application now So it is stopped and run it again. So once application comes up, we'll create some data via user interface. Something, write something, no problem. 
save it we create one more task one more user story on our scrum board so we go to the first user story and we create some task make a blog post make it yellow color refresh create one more task blah 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 pink color we have created some tasks yeah we have some data in our database now and we can create task in second user story i think this data is enough to test our scenario see now we have some data in our database because we have created the data via our user interface now you can see each and every user story and you can check it the data is available so what are the changes that we are making that we are able to see because application is retrieving the data and it is showing on it here so we have some data now I'm going to stop the docker containers and I will restart it since we create a docker volumes and the docker creates the physical file system in the host file system in the host machine so there, there is a host file system and there is a folder which has been created with the docker so and we have defined already named volume here so what will happen so whenever you create the data on virtual file system the folder in the virtual file system that is replicated to the physical file system in the host machine so even if we stop the container and restart the container still it gets the data from host machine and populated on the user interface which is running in docker container and you can see all the tasks which we have created in the previous session you can see all the data which we have created in the previous session we stopped the container and we restarted so even application started with a completely fresh state but it retrieves the data from host machine and it is populating on the user interface so that is the power of docker volumes so definitely you have to use docker volumes when you are working with the databases and stateful applications so you should retain the data because you may need to restart the applications in production sometime to summarize what we have discussed until now we have looked at what is docker volumes and when to use docker volumes and what are the types in docker volumes and finally we have seen a simple demo about docker volumes how we can utilize it in case of uh, stateful applications like spring boot application or some databases that's it and if you have any question please put them in comment section definitely i will come back to you as soon as possible and i would like to request you please subscribe to my channel and also share with your friends and colleagues if you really like my demos and also press the bell icon to get the regular updates from my channel thank you guys see you in the next video until then good luck